What's going on, guys? What's going on? What's going on? It's been a little while. Matter of fact, it's been a long time, but we are back. We in full effect. Jesus is in the house. Scribbles representing the most high. Representing for Jesus. So uh thank you guys for tuning in. Let's get started. You know the word of prayer. Father God, we come before you right now. In the precious, mighty, and wonderful name of Jesus. We come before you, Lord, presenting this prayer, Lord. I pray, Lord, you touch the hearts and minds. You prepare us, God, to receive from you. We are now, Lord, in the season, Lord. It's the season for Thanksgiving, God. I pray, Lord, you will put like us, you put a special blessing, you know, on the families nationwide, worldwide, Lord, that's standing, you know, in need, Lord. Lord, the standing in need, Lord, of a love, Lord, a special blessing, Lord, material-wise, Lord, a Stand, Lord, the families, Lord, to stand, Lord, and, and, and need you know of necessities, God. Pray, God, you meet those needs right now, God. Pray, Lord, you meet those needs, Lord. Not just the physical need, God, but you, you, you will meet the mental needs, Lord, the aim. Emotional needs, the spiritual needs, God. Most importantly, God, you prepare us, God, to receive from you, Lord. Not just the families, Lord, but worldwide, Lord, you know, we need your word, God. It's no matter. You know how successful, Lord, we, we are, Lord. We still need your word, God. Lord, I, I, I take this take this time, Lord, to, to thank you, God, for blessing me, Lord, meeting my needs, Lord, blessing my career, God. Bless my loved ones. Lord, we are here now, Lord, to receive from you, God. To receive your word, the engrafted word that transforms lives, that saves souls, God. The engrafted word that saves our souls, that's filled with infallible proofs, God. We are waiting to hear from you, Lord. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, you take me right now. You hide me behind the cross. It be less of me and more of you. God, you speak to this here. Your people, we are waiting, Lord. We are listening, God. And we give you the glory, Lord. You give us the blessing. We call it done right now in Jesus' name. I pray, amen. Mm. We are climbing. Jacob's ladder, we are climbing Jacob's ladder, we are climbing Jacob's ladder, soldiers of the Every round goes higher and higher. Every round goes higher and higher. Every round goes higher and higher. Soldiers of the cross. My millennial.
videos and this is for y'all. We are climbing Jacob's ladder, soldiers of the cross. Climb, oh climb, climb, oh climb. Every round goes higher and higher, soldiers of the cross. Climb, oh climb, climb, oh climb, sinner, do you love my Jesus, soldier of the cross? Uh, climb, oh climb, climb, oh climb. If you love him, why not serve him? Soldiers of the cross. Climb, oh climb. Climb, oh climb. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Soldiers of the cross. Climb. Jesus can do good all by himself. Today I want to talk to you about Jesus can do good all by himself. He don't need you. Let's get first things first. Let's make this very clear. For some reason, we find ourselves, we sometimes, we might get conceited or prideful, we might get distracted and think that, you know, oh man, the Lord needs me, blah, 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 I'm all this and all that. No, ma'am, no, sir. First things first, Jesus can do good all by himself. Scripture text, it reads as follows. Psalms, 50th chapter, verse number 12. Scripture text reason for, and this here, you know, as the Lord is talking, matter of fact, let's go look up at uh, the seventh verse. We'll start from 7 verse 12 verse. Scripture text reads the following. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. So we already know he's talking right now. Next verse. I, I will, will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. Verse number 12, listen to this. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine in the fullness thereof. He don't need you. Jesus can do good all by himself. Let's get that straight before we go any further. Jesus can do good all by himself. Next chapter. Next chapter we're going to look at is uh, John... 15, verse number 12. We'll start with verse 12. John 15. A lot in these verses. Starting with the 12. <laughs> it's a lot of verses 12. Them 12 verses. Look. John 15, verse number 12. Scripture reads as follows. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Next verse. Greater love hath no man than this, 
that a man lay down his life for his friends. Next verse. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I, I command you. Drop down to verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. So he doesn't need us, but he desires us. He desires to commune with us. He made us. <laughs> he made us. We did not. We did not make ourselves. When we can get a grip of that, when we can can take those words and meditate upon that, and consider, and Look at the fact that you did not make yourself. I did not make myself. He made us. Before we was in our mother's womb, he knew us and called us. He formed us. So when we can come to grips with the fact that we don't make ourselves that he doesn't need us we need him and he desires to commune with us I dare to say we'll be better off and he desires to commune with us he desires the fellowship he commands us to do certain things for our benefit he doesn't need us but he commands us to do these things he commands to love one another for our benefit he commands to love one another so that things may be well with us. He commands us to love one another so that we can bear fruit. He ch chose us. We didn't choose him because while we were yet sinners, he Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, we wasn't even warned by him or realizing our lost state. When you was in the world, when we was in the world, he still loved us and gave himself for us and made provision that we can have a right to the tree of life when we were yet sinners. He still loved us. He still gave us the template when he came on the planet in flesh and walked amongst the people. He provided a template and showed us. That it, it, it is possible that we can live a victorious life, successful life, glorious life, a saved life, a sanctified life, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. He showed us that this is possible, but it's only through him. See, he don't need us, but we need him. John 14 and 6, the scripture text reads as follows, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's Jesus was talking, showing us that he is the way. I don't care how much you think you're doing good or you did this good deed, you did that good deed. All that is like filthy rags. He says in another verse, he said, our righteousness is like filthy rags. Let God be the truth and every man a liar. He don't need us. We need him. Next verse. We're going to look at uh, Matthew. Matthew 25, verse 31 through 46. Matthew 25. Verse, verses 25, verse 31 through 46. Scripture text it reads as follows. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, 
and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also to them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or thirst, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. How's your love walk today? Are ye thankful? And furthermore, once again, how is your love walk? How many people have you fed? How many blind eyes have you opened? How many, you know, number one, the Lord, he's the one performing uh, miraculous. But have you yielded to him? Have you allowed him to use you? Love one another. When we read in John, but before we shoot to John, returning to Matthew, the things that you do the things that we do, they will count. When you visiting the sick, are you visiting those locked up? You, 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 are you, you giving those that's in need? You're meeting those needs as, as, as much as the Lord has provided you with made you capable of. When you do these things, keep in mind you're doing it to Jesus. He said right there in his word in Matthew. Matthew chapter 25, he said right there, he said, verse number 40, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So be mindful. You ain't, you ain't just doing this stuff in vain. Love. Now, flipping to John, 15th chapter. 15th chapter we read, he said, Sixteen verse, right? He says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain. What fruit is he talking about? The whatsoever. The whatsoever. Ye shall ask of the Father my name, he may give it to you. What fruit? He chose us. He chose us, number one, he chose us to love one another. 
Jesus made the first choice to love and to die for us, offer us eternal life. We make the next choice to accept or reject his offer. Without his choice, we would have no choice to make, and he has chosen us, number one, to love one another. He said right there in his word. But this is my commandment, that ye love one another. Verse number uh, 12, John 15. As I have loved you. That was the first commandment. He said right there. Love. Love is the first one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then love your neighbors. You love yourself. So he chose us to love them. And number one. Nextly, you drop down to verse 16. He talks about he shows us to bear fruit. We already know what the fruit is. The fruit. The fruit. Look at um. Next time, a couple weeks, we're gonna be talking more, you know, on the fruit. Because there's six ways that we bear fruit. We'll get into that next time. So, but but um, chose us to bear fruit. Uh, reference point or, or uh, survey you know if you want to do inventory a good way to do inventory weekly you look upon your life weekly you know you say to yourself how many sick have I, I, I visited, helped, who, who have I uh, fed? And these are nice ways to e eggs, salmon yourself, weekly, you can do this weekly. And returning to this, Jesus, we got to remember, Jesus, he can't do good all by himself. Because you, you say to yourself, he, he gave his life for us. What you sacrifice your, your, your life for? You know what I mean? He gave his life for the sins of the world. You can't beat that. But what you can do is to yield. That's what we can do. We can yield to the prompting you know, of the Spirit. That's what we can do. We may not have, you know, sacrifice our life for someone, but what we can do, there are multiple ways that we can practice sacrificial love. We can't use that as no excuse. A lot of times people will say, well, we ain't Jesus, so... Hey, we can't use that for an excuse. We have him living inside of us. Therefore, we have the power. We have the strength. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So we have the strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We can show and exhibit and share and bear fruit. And we can show sacrificial love. We, we, listening, helping people, and encouraging people. Giving. Give all the love you can. And then when you've done that, Give a little more. Give a little more. We have no excuse. What we have is capabilities. Because we've been blessed. We've been chosen, anointed, and appointed for such a time as this. Therefore, furthermore, we can bear fruit. We can show love. We can share love. We can exude love. We can mature in love. 
Christ, he already paid it all. He paid it all, but he didn't pay it all for you to be sitting there on the sideline. That's not why he paid it all. He paid it all so that we can be trophies of God's grace. And that's what you are once you yield to the Spirit. You, you receive for Jesus Christ to come into your heart. We have to keep in mind that God doesn't need anything. So fulfilling his directives, it doesn't add to his strength or his well-being. I will say it again. He don't need us. We need him. And he gives us commands for our benefit. He's not trying to be too hard on us. He's not trying to stop us from having fun. Or, no, he is, is for our benefit. Even when we worship the Lord, it does not enhance him anyway, but it does benefit us. So it is wise. It is wise to heed wise counsel. You know why you feel joy Anytime you're giving people help, you know why you feel that way? Because when you're feeling the joy and you're helping somebody and you're not looking for nothing to come back in your return, you are, you are experiencing the Lord at work. It is God at work. You are being like God. Because you are doing something from a sincere heart, a pure place. And that's the kind of thing that's acceptable to God. The purity, sharing, not looking for nothing, no return. And check this out. He blesses you. He shush, showers us or bless me. Because he sees and he knows the motive is pure. You notice your joy is stirred. And in his presence is the fullness of joy. That's why I say it's him working. It's, the, 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 and there's nothing like that. There's absolutely nothing like that. You can't beat it. So it's smart. To adhere to the principles of God. It is smart to adhere to the principles of God. Peace and joy. Matthew 6.33. Scripture text it reads as follows. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Uh, Matthew 6.33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What is the kingdom of God? I'm glad you asked. Look at uh, Romans 14, chapter, verse number 17. Scripture text reads as follows. Mm-hmm. Verse number 17, it reads as follows. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So what's the kingdom of God? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. This is the kingdom of God. When you're feeling that joy, when you your joy is, is being stirred, when tapping more into the joy, you tapping more into the kingdom of God. And it's peace that surpasses all understanding. Well, keep your hearts and minds, keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The kingdom of God, peace and joy, righteousness and the Holy Ghost. We'll look at, uh, we'll look at 
you know, this word uh, peace. Check out the word peace. And this word literally means freedom from disturbance, tranquility, peace. A peace that surpasseth all understanding. It only it only comes from, from God. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Because it it oh, oh, there is one source. And that's the Most High God. And that is a part of the kingdom of God, which we just read. Romans uh, 14, 17. Joy. We check this word. Uh, joy out. Literally means a feeling of great pleasure and pleasure and Happiness, pleasure and happiness. This is joy, great pleasure and happiness. And this, this too, is a part of the kingdom of God. Righteousness. You check out this word. Righteousness. Now, in this word literally means the quality of being morally right the quality of being morally right or justifiable we have been restored. When you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you've been redeemed. You've been restored. You've been restored to your rightful place and right standing with God. You have been declared righteousness. And once again, this here is a part of the kingdom of God. Now, here's something we need to dispel. Where, you know, a lot of people, they feel like well, you know, I give my life to the Lord, so it's going to be uh, smooth sailing. Do not be deceived. We are at war. You have been enlisted knowing the war. It's the smartest thing to join the war that way. Because here's the thing. Regardless whether you know it or not, you are constantly at war whether you like it or not. But the thing is, if you're going to be at war, you might as well be on the, the winning team. Might as well be on the winning team. So we are at war. You know why we are at war? Because we have a, a rivalry. We have an adversary. We have a foe. And that's the devil. And he come to steal, kill, and destroy. John chapter uh, 10 chapters. Jesus was talking here. Mentioned in verse number 10. He said, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's what he come for. He come to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus Talking to he says, I, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So he don't just want to give you no uh, middle way, no mediocre. No, he wants to give you life abundantly in the midst of war. 
you, we still have joy. This is the thing that will uh, separate us. It separates us from the world because we can go through hell and high water and we still have hope. We still have joy. We still have an expected end. We have a future because of Jesus Christ and Christ alone. It is the smartest to be on the winning team. And this is where the kingdom of God is shown. You, you maturing in it. You walking in it. Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. It's being developed. You are laying fast hold of it. Because you, you decide you decide to make the the smartest choice, the wisest choice. And you yield to the Spirit of God. Receive Jesus Christ. Nor is your Lord. Receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to say it again though. We have a we have a, a rivalry. He doesn't like you. He's not going to like you. That's okay though. Because we ain't in this thing for him to like us. We in this thing for eternal life. We in this thing to, to mature in love. We in this thing to help somebody else. We in this thing, we are winners. We are victorious. So we don't care about what the naysayer got to say. And he's got a lot to say. He's got the critic. That's what he is, a critic. Scripture call him accuser of the brethren. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. Scripture text it reads as follows. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. Scripture text it goes like this. These six things do what the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and has the shit. Innocent blood and heart the device of imaginations and feet that be swift to run into mischief or false witness to speak of lies and he that sow of discord among brethren. These six things the Lord hate. Watch this. You know what Satan hates? He hates when you humble. He hates the <laughs> meekness look. Because the Lord refuses the proud look. Satan loves it. Satan loves it when you prideful because he knows the Lord is it, 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 it is. No, I don't like that. So, so these. Seven things that Satan hates. Humility. Truth. Peace. A heart that is praising God. Thinking good thoughts. Rejoicing in God. He hates that. Patient. He hates it when you're patient. He hates it. When... You know why? Because when you wait on the Lord, He's going to renew your strength. Satan don't like that. Another thing Satan hates, he. Uh, 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 witness. Who bear witness to the truth? Lastly, peacemakers. Why? Because when you're a peacemaker, when you're holding on to the truth, when you're declaring the truth, when you're speaking the truth, when you're humility, when you're walking with humility, when you are at peace, you're not in the midst of confusion. When you have a heart that's praising God, thinking about God, thinking about Wonderful things, lovely things, things that are good report, virtuous things. 
when you heaven, you are rejoicing. When you're being patient, when you're waiting on the Lord who's renewing your strength, you're going to mount up with wings of eagles. You're going to run and not get weary. You're going to walk and not faint. When you're patient, when you're bearing witness to the truth, when you're a peacemaker, you are giving God the ultimate glory and Satan can't stand it. I'm going to say it again. We don't care about what he's talking about. Let your love abound. The scripture says, let love abound. Walk in love. Mature in love. Grab hold, lay fast hold in love. Show your love. And when you have given all your love, give a little more. Go the extra mile. Who's willing to go the extra mile? Who's going to stand up for the cross? Who's going to stand up for Jesus in spite of, in the midst of, trials and tribulations, naysayers and critics? Are you going to be that good soldier for Christ? Are you going to be that warrior for Christ? That's the question. Jesus don't need you. We need him. Jesus can do good all by himself. But he has devised a plan. He has sacrificed his life. He has gave us a right to the tree of life so that we can be restored and right standing with the Father. And he did it because he loved us. You can't beat that. The smartest thing that we can do as a people is to adhere to his principles, to yield to the Spirit of God, to surrender all to Jesus. No reservations. Give him all. He gave his all. He gave his very best. He laid down his precious life. He knew no sin, but became sin for us so that we can be the righteousness of God in Christ. You can't beat that. You can't beat that. Check it out. You can't beat that. You can't beat it. Look down to the Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Scripture text reads as follows. Chapter 5. Starting with verse number 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, Yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though, uh, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. What a wonder. What an amazing, what is the most amazing thing a person could ever done. Jesus done it for you. He gave his life for us and rose again with all power in his hand and has given us the right to the tree of life. We can be royal priesthood. We can be kings and priests and queens and priests. We can be the righteousness of God in Christ. Everything Paul and his companions did was to honor God. Christ's love controlled their lives. Because Christ died for us all, we also are dead to our old lives. Like Paul, we should no longer live to please ourselves. We ought to spend our lives pleasing Christ who died and rose again for us. 
Christians are brand new people on the inside. The Holy Spirit gives them new life and they're not the same anymore. We are not reformed, rehabilitated, or re-educated. We are new creations. It's not just no, it's not no rehabilitate, no reforming. We are new creations living in vital union with Christ. You check out Colossians, second chapter, six and seven verse. Scripture text it reads as follows. Colossians, second chapter, verses. 6 through 7. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Praise God for Thanksgiving. But are we really thankful? There's a way we show that. We show that with sincerity. We show that with love. We show that with adhering to his principles. We show that with walking in humility, speaking truth, maintaining peace, being peacemakers, having a heart that's praising God, rejoicing in God, thinking about the Lord, thinking about lovely things, whatsoever is love. It's a... Uh, Look at, um, let's go to Philippians chapter number four. Starting with verse number, uh, check out verse number eight. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are uh, honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. This is the way that we show our love. This is the way that we mature in love. This is the way we grow. Humility, adhering to the truth, living the truth, speaking the truth, being peaceful, having a heart that's praising God, rejoicing in God, thinking about whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, thinking on these things, being patient. We have to show more patience with people. Things will come at you seven days a week, daily. But we have to have the patience to show. We have to show it. We have to show patience. Trust God enough to know that he knows what's best. He has a plan for our life, and we are confident in this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work is going to perform it until the day of Christ. We have to trust in that. We have to bear witness to the truth. We have to be peacemakers. This is the way. And we show our love. This is the way that we grow in love. This is the way we adhere to his principles. This is the way we live a victorious life. This is the way. This is the way. The Lord brings us back to himself. The Lord brings us back to himself. We are not merely turning a new leaf. We are beginning a, a new life. We ain't turning a new leaf. We are beginning a, a, a new life. We're beginning a, a new life under Master Jesus. It's not just you turning a new leaf. It is a new life. The Lord brings us back to himself. He reconciles us 
by blotting out our sins and making us righteous, declaring us righteous. We are no longer strangers, foreigners to God when we trust in Christ. Because we have been reconciled to God, he now gives us the privilege to encourage others to do the same. That is a privilege, man. That is a privilege. An ambassador is an official representative from one country to another. As believers, we are Christ's ambassadors. Christ's ambassadors sent with his message of reconciliation to the world. An ambassador of reconciliation has an important responsibility. We dare not take this responsibility lightly. How well are you fulfilling your commission as Christ's ambassador? It's a question we, we, we definitely need to um, question ourselves about that. How well, how well, how well are we fulfilling the Great Commission? When we trust in Christ, we make an exchange. He takes our sin and makes us right with God. Our sin was laid on Christ at his crucifixion. His righteousness is given to us at our conversion. This is what Christians mean by Christ's atonement for sin. In the world, uh, that phrase, Bartering in the world, it works only when two people exchange goods of relative value. It must be the same value. But that's the way it works in the world. But the Lord, he has traded his righteousness for our sin. Amazing. Something of immeasurable worth. Immeasurable worth for something completely worthless. The Lord can do that. The Lord can do it. He can do good all by himself. He don't need us. He's just showing that. How grateful we should be for his goodness to us. Because we didn't deserve it. We wasn't worthy. But still, in spite of, because of his love, he commended his love to us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. How could the Corinthian believers now, before we talk about it, look, he has commended his love. He went the extra mile. How much more should we go the extra mile for our sister and brother? He paid it all. He paid it all. Praise your name, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord, because you've been so good to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord, because you've been so good to me. Thank you for mercy, thank you for grace, thank you for taking the time out to show your face for a man that was once lost, now I'm found on the front lines for Christ, holding it down, never front lines for Christ, you knowing it now, if you didn't know it then, I'ma say it again, on the front lines for Christ, holding it down, never front lines for Christ, you knowing it now, thank you, thank you, my, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lord, cause you've been so good to me. Thank you, 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 Lord, cause you've been so good. Blessing in disguise, blessing I specify. Let me take this time to testify, testify. I was down and out, locked in the cell block. Didn't think I would get out, feeling shell shocked. Then you came and brought me out, and you changed me. Yes, you changed me. 
a rearrangement. Inside and now, and now I'm giving you praises. All my days there's no escaping. Your love is chasing, fulfilling the cake and hole. Painstaking, love is unequivocal, unequivocal when I was miserable, miserable. You fill me with joy and always keep me spiritful. Thank you, 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 thank you Lord, because you've been so good to me. Friend, you've been listening to this broadcast and you feel like, hey, you want some of this Jesus. You want some of this love walk that I'm talking about. You know you need a change in your life, a change that only Jesus can give. Friend, if you're feeling that in your heart, if you know you've been slipping and sliding, if you know you need to come to the light, repeat these words. Listen to me. Father God, we come for you, Lord. I, come for, I admit I am a sinner. And I'm sorry for my sins. And I'm willing to turn away from my sinful lifestyle right now and follow after Jesus according to God's word. I believe you, Lord, that you died on the cross for my sins and you rose from the grave on the third day by God's power. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart, be my personal Lord and Savior, and manage my life from this day forward. I confess from with my mouth that you are the Lord Jesus. I, I, I ask you, Lord Jesus, to fill me with your Holy Spirit from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Let a double portion be upon me, and I thank you, God, for saving me. Friend, if you said that prayer, you are now a part of the family of Christ. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The heavenly host is rejoicing. I, I, I am rejoicing with you. Find yourself a Bible-believing church. Get a hold to the word of God. Feed on that thing. Pray to him. You pray. You talk to God. You read his word. He talks to you. That's one of the ways he talks to you. Believe and keep going strong. Go forth and shine and bear fruit. And surround yourself with your fellow believers in Christ, your brothers and sisters in Christ. Get it? Find yourself around, surround yourself with brothers and sisters in Christ and grow. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. We're celebrating. The Lord's getting the glory. A true heart of Thanksgiving. You are part of the family now. Rejoice in them. 4562 West Washington. We are getting a, a, a service. We're doing a service on Saturday. It's coming up. You know, if you guys are going to be in here, um, state of California, come on down to Los Angeles and celebrate with us Saturday uh, 4 p.m. 4562 West Washington Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. You guys be blessed. Jay Scribbles is here. Jay Scribbles out. Catch y'all next time. Jay Scribble music. We're keeping the Lord first. We're shining. Keep flowing. Y'all make sure you follow my links on the multiple platforms. You look up Jay Scribbles music. One word, J Scribs music. It was just a letter J and then Scribs and music. One word. You go on the rest of the platforms, you look up and J Scribbles. It's the letter J. Not no J A Y, the letter J and then scr Scribbles. Look it up, get plugged in, get this word, get this music, get you some praise and worship going, and let that fill you. Let that flood your mind and your heart. The words of God, the engrafted word that will save us. So we praise the Lord for you. Until next time, Jay Scribbles out. Stay plugged in and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Salute. Salute, salute.